Can you call Paul Rudd right now if you wanted and he'd answer? It's possible. <laughs> yeah, he's that good a friend. Uh, would you say he's a top 10 friends of, in your life? Um, yeah, maybe. In, in terms of uh, the whole of my life, he's up there. Talk about a guy. Talk about um, <clears throat> uh, loyalty. First of all, where, did, you, did you just meet him? But you met him before White Hot American or did he audition? We, I knew, I sort of knew him through Zach Orth because mm. Zach Orth, Zach. the best. best. Oh my God, the best. Zach Orth had been in the Boz Lerman Romeo and Juliet yes. with, with Paul uh, in the late 90s. And basically, Zach invited him to see this weird little play that me and Michael Schalter and Joel Trulia wrote called Sex, aka Wieners and Boobs in 1999. That. And uh, he came and was just like, oh my God, whatever you guys, your shtick is right up my alley. And so we basically, at the time, were trying to figure out how to get Wet Hot American Summer put together. And we said, would you, you know, attach your... And he st- wasn't a name then? Not, no, not really. Not really. He, he had been in 200 Cigarettes and he had been in, he was in Clueless. Uh, yes. And he also had played the romantic lead in um, Object of My Affection with Jennifer Aniston. So he was... Not a big name at all, but he was enough of a name for us to like say like there would be value added to our project if you would be part of it. So you just offered him the part. So we offered him a part, and I didn't really know him or his work that well, quite honestly. Um, but I knew I liked what I had seen, and I was like, "That's great! It would be awesome if you were part of it." And so, um, yeah. And then I didn't really, really get to know him until he came to set to do Wet Hot American Summer. Were you blown away by how good he was, how funny he was? I have to admit. I was less, I was like, he's okay. I really didn't get it until I was in editing. Really? I th- and, and it was only then that I was like, oh, this guy's otherworldly, you know? And then, sin- and then since then, and I was lucky enough to, I think, make five movies in a row with Paul. And every fucking take, every time, like, you're just like, this guy is magic. Like, he's, he's really quite something. You know, it's amazing is what you just said. As a director, you're watching him on set and you're going, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then you're editing and you're finding out the genius. It reminds me of that that show, The Offer. Did you see The Offer? No. It's the making of um, The Godfather. Mm. And the studio, Robert Evans, was like looking at the Dale. He didn't want Pacino. He says, no, nah, this guy's no good. Bob was a good friend. <laughs> was he? <laughs> to, to many people, I'm sure. <laughs> to many people, I'm sure. But he watched the dailies. And he's like, this, this is crap. This is what is he doing? Hmm. And it wasn't until later when they put it together, he put, they put the genius together. Yeah. So, but how do you, how do you know that you don't know? Well, I mean, everything. Yeah. So many things just come with experience, and there's just no substitute for understanding that. But uh, yeah, with Paul, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think I was making my first movie, and I was thinking about a thousand things, and you know, I just didn't right. really clock how great he was, and. uh but in post, like I said, we were just like looking at them like, oh my God, this guy's like working on a different level. And then over the years, working very closely with him and, you know, starring in movies that we, you know, we're working together, writing together. I just see how his, you know, and it seems so he's not the kind of guy that talks about his process that much or like is very uh, highfalutin about it at all. Right. And I'm, I mean, I have memories of working on things where he's playing, you know, Scrabble on his phone and until like, after we've said action, I'm like, put your phone away. It's time to start. And he's like, oh, right, 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 okay. And then just boom, boom. And he's in the, like, so in it and so real and so funny. And also he'll give you, in four takes, he'll give you four completely different, but all great and usable options for this amazing, you know, it's it's a, and it really makes you appreciate you know, as me, as someone who's done the, a fair amount of acting, but never really been great at it, and like understand, like just the appreciation for that art form is just you know when you see someone who just has that thing, you know, what are you gonna do? DiCaprio has that. He was doing what's eating Gilbert Grape. Yeah, and they say that he would just be in like. Uh, mama, you know, he'd be, mm-hmm. he'd like, but first he'd be like j- joking, farting, and laughing, and doing all these things off stage. And, there, and actually, he's like, I don't know if you, and he would get into this character like that. Yeah. And that is, 
It's it's amazing. And I think that a lot of people have to do that. I can't sit there and stew in, in the part and just constantly thinking of the part. I'm best when I'm just talking to people, joking around and action, and then I could jump into it. If I'm thinking about things too much, it's not going to be as good. Yeah. Well, and everyone has a different way to get there and they're all legitimate. Uh, I've learned that too. Every actor has a different process and that's great. you know. And I've done some of my favorite acting of myself when I'm directing at the same time because I'm not... It, prevents me from overthinking it right and so if i'm thinking about everything else and then it's just action then i'm just like doing it yeah you're like the hitchcock you, i'm you, like you the, always appear I'm the in hitchcock your movies. of filmmaking that's you're what i've the been hitchcock called. of filmmaking yeah 